Hello students, welcome back. It's Sir Clint here yet again to teach you the amazing world of science. In today's lesson, we will be tackling about volcanoes. Have you watched the animated movie Moana? In the movie, a lava monster named Tekka, of which resembles a volcano, was greatly feared by many. Little did they know that Tekka was in fact Tefiti, a goddess with the power to create life. Because of Moana, she was able to restore the lost heart of Tefiti. Come with me as we understand how volcanoes are considered to be a beautiful disaster. But first, let us define some terms that you will encounter. Let us define what is volcano. These are natural opening in the Earth's surface where molten rocks, smoke, gases, and ashes are ejected. Have you seen Mayan Volcano located in Albay here in the Philippines? Did you know that Mayan Volcano is one of the world's most active volcano and it is very popular because of its perfect cone? Volcanoes have three basic parts, namely the base, the slope, and the summit where the crater or opening is located. Speaking of crater, crater is a funnel shaped depression at the top of a volcano formed as a result of explosive eruptions. It is the mouth or the opening of a volcano. We have here the Taal Volcano located in Batangas. This volcano has many craters, not just one, two, or three, but 47 craters. Next is Caldera. It is a volcanic crater that is formed when a part of the wall of a crater collapses following an explosive eruption. A caldera collapse is usually triggered by the emptying of a magma chamber beneath the volcano as a result of a large volcanic eruption. When we say magma, it is a hot fluid or semi-fluid material below or within Earth's crust that is usually made by molten rocks. When the magma is ejected out of the volcano, it is now called lava. Lava is an Italian word which means the slide, which is what molten rocks does once it reaches the surface. Now, let us proceed to the different types of volcanoes. Volcanoes can be categorized according to its shape and its eruption. Let us have first the types of volcanoes according to its shape. Shield Volcano It resembles a warrior shield laying on the ground. It is formed by the eruption of highly fluid or low viscosity lava, which travels farther and forms thinner flows than the more viscous lava erupted from a stratovolcano. The second type is what we call Cinder Cone Volcano. It is built from ejected lava fragments. They have a steep slope white crater and is the most abundant of the three major volcanoes. It is also known as scoria cone. Lastly, we have composite volcanoes, also known as stratovolcanoes. This is large, nearly perfect slope structure formed from the alternate solidification of both lava and pyroclastic deposits. According to volcanologists or the people who study about volcanoes, some of the Earth's grandest mountains are composite or stratovolcanoes. One good example is our very own Mayan Volcano. But why do volcanoes have different types? It is because the process of magma formation is different at each type of plate boundary. Therefore, the composition of magma differs in each tectonic setting. Now, let us go to the different types of volcanic eruption or the types of volcanoes according to its eruption. The first one is Phariatic. It is a stream-driven eruption as the hot rocks come in contact with water. It is short-lived, characterized by ash columns, but may be an onset of a more enormous eruption. It is also known as hydrothermal. In fact, the Al Volcano had a periodic eruption last January 12, 2020. Next, we have Pariato Magmatic. It is a violent eruption 
due to the contact between water and magma. Strombolian It is a period weak to violent eruption characterized by fountain lava. The explosions usually occur every few minutes at irregular or irregular intervals. The fourth one is what we call Volcanian. It is characterized by tall eruption that reach up to 20 km high with pyroclastic flow and ash fall tepla. Lastly, we have Plinian. It is excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastic. Plinian eruption clouds can rise in the stratosphere and are sometimes continuously produced for several hours. Mount Pinatubo had a Plinian eruption way back June 6 to 15, 1991. There are several ways by which volcanoes can be classified. One of these is according to its record of eruption. So let us have the first classification. It is called Active Volcano. It is a volcano that has had at least one record of eruption during the past 10,000 years meaning it had erupted and had shown volcanic activity. According to Feebox, there are 24 active volcanoes in the country. The following are some of the active volcanoes in the Philippines and their location. Take a look of these volcanoes. On the other hand, we can also classify volcanoes as inactive volcano. They are also called sleeping volcanoes. It is one that could erupt but has not erupted for more than 10,000 years. That is why they are dormant. A dormant volcano is capable of erupting and will probably erupt again in the future but hasn't had an eruption for a very long time. One example is Mount Pinatubo. Did you know that before, Mount Pinatubo was an inactive volcano? However, it erupted on year 1991. Therefore, inactive volcanoes can be active volcanoes. Here are some of the inactive volcanoes and their location here in the Philippines. Extinct volcanoes are volcanoes that are not expected to erupt in the future, like Mount Butay in Camigin. So, how are volcanoes formed? Magma can rise when pieces of Earth's crust called tectonic plates slowly move away from each other. Magma also rises when these tectonic plates move toward each other. A final way that magma rises is over hot spots. A volcanic hot spot is an area in the mantle from which heat rises as a thermal plume from deep in the earth. High heat and lower pressure at the base of the tectonic plate facilitates melting of the rock. This melt called magma rises through cracks and erupts to form volcanoes. As the tectonic plate moves over the stationary hot spot, the volcanoes are rafted away and new ones form in their place. This results in chains of volcanoes such as the Hawaiian Islands. Let us take a good look of the process of volcanic eruption. Magma inside the volcano has a high temperature. As the magma is continuously heated, it goes up. As it rises, Gas bubbles are developed. Gas bubbles are trapped and are expanding, causing the molten material to swell too, resulting in a gradual increase in pressure within the volcano. When the pressure exceeds the strength of the overlaying rock, fracturing occurs. The resulting breaks lead to a further drop in confining pressure, which in turn causes enhanced gas bubbles to form. Then, magma is ejected out as lava. A volcanic eruption is often associated with negative effects. However, volcanic eruptions also have positive effects. It 
brings out various precious minerals and chemicals to the surface. It helps to increase the fertility of the soil, which is why volcanic soil is much valued. Volcanic activity can lead to the formation of new land, which people can farm and live on. Also, it can be a famous tourist spot, just like Mount Mayon and Mount Pinatubo. To end our lesson, we can thank volcanoes for life on Earth. To put simply, volcanoes keep the Earth warm and wet, which are two critical elements for sustaining life. And that ends our lesson on volcanoes. Thank you students. I really do hope you were able to understand it comprehensively. This has been Sir Clint still saying, continue to feed your curiosity in science.